Today, we're turning up the heat with one of the most beloved and feared classes in Diablo 4, the Sorcerer. Fire, ice, lightning, the primal elements of creation are at her fingertips, a symphony of destruction, and we're here to unlock her full potential. Alright, let's get right into it. First, let's go through the armor pieces and what's required. We'll start with the helm. On the helmet, you have got the Aspect Flame Shield. Let you move unhindered through enemies. Enemies you move through become immobilized for two to three seconds, depending on your role. Now, the chest piece, the aspect that you want on that is the lucky hit. When you hit a crowd control enemy, there is up to a 30 to 50% chance for the next crowd control effect to spread to an unaffected enemy. This comes in clutch, but we'll explain a bit more why later. Okay, for the hands, you want Unstable Currents has a 10 to 20% chance to cast an additional shock skill. Now for the pants, you want enemies that die while frozen have a 11 to 20% chance to unleash a Frost Nova. For the boots, you want the unique Esu's Heirloom. This gives your critical strike chance an increase of 15 to 25% based on your movement speed and we are going to be moving fast in this build now for the weapon we want a one-handed weapon and we also would prefer the daggers for their boost in damage to close enemies this one particularly we are using the aspect distant enemies have an eight percent chance to be stunned for two seconds when they hit you you deal 20 to 40 percent increased damage to stunned enemies it is a big damage boost and always, always consistent. Now for the focus, you want the aspect. You deal 25 to 35% more damage to immobilized, stunned, or frozen enemies. A pretty basic one that's consistent on most builds. Now for the rings. You want Ice Shards Pierce. Three to four times dealing 25 to 20% less damage per subsequent hit. This is key to this build, just like it is for the other cold builds. For your other ring though, this is what makes the build. The aspect you want is while both bonuses from Esu's Ferocity Key Passive are active, your attack speed is increased by 40 to 50%. This is what allows us to proc our barriers without needing to use our Frost Shield. Once again, I will go over how all of these different aspects play into the build once we have finished going through the different equipment needed. For the amulet, we need the aspect. While unstable currents is not active, the shock skills have a 8 to 15% chance to trigger a free cast from it. Now, this is probably the only real piece that requires a full perfect roll on the aspect, um, which will give you the 15% chance to proc. That, along with the synergies of Esso's Ferocity and the possibility to cast a second shock skill, is what makes the synergy of this build so strong. Okay, now let's move on to the skill tree. <clears throat> For this, we want the Firebolt, just one single one in the Firebolt, and that is so we can use it as an enchantment. We want to put one in the first of the arc bolt and then we want to go down to flickering arc lash and we want that for the movement speed boost then we move to the second skill tree for that one we want ice shards and we want as many points in that as possible and we also want to take enhanced ice shards and destructive ice shards for the vulnerability then we want to grab devastation only to unlock the elemental dominance we want two points into that now we'll move down to the third skill tree in this one we want a flame shield enhanced flame shield and shimmering flame shield just for the little bit extra life then we want element attunement we only got one point in this because we are going to be lucky hitting a lot <clears throat> then we got one in frost nova one in enhanced frost nova and one down in mystical frost nova pretty basic so far now we move on to the next tree and we want three into the lucky hit passive. Align the elements. We want one and we want only one in protection. That's all we need. Then we move down to the lightning spear. 
This we want one in, and we want to grab Enhanced Lightning Spear, and we want to grab Invoke Lightning Spear for the On the next fork of the tree, we want to grab Icy Veil. We want one in that, and then we want to grab three points into Snap Freeze for the lucky hit and the freezing capabilities. Then we want to go down and grab one in a flame, and we want three devouring blades. We also blades. want to grab three in Conjuring now, Master. We move, now we want to put DPS one into Static when Discharge, we our and we want to put three into Shocking Impact. Now onto the next part. For our ultimate, we want to grab all of the cold bonuses. So we want to grab three in the uh, Hall Frost. We want to grab three into the Frigid Breeze. And then we want to also grab three into Icy Touch. All of these are going to help with our DPS. Now for our ultimate skill, we want to run Unstable Currents and we want to grab its prime unstable currents we don't need to worry about the third one then we want to grab coursing currents for the extra crit and then we want to move down to our passive we want to grab esso's ferocity all right well that's it for the skill tree so now let's move on to the paragon board the first glyph that you want to put in the first socket is your control glyph this gives you a boost to all crowd control damage for the next one, you want to use the burning board, and in the glyph socket, you want to put conjurer. This gives you an extra 20% duration on all of your conjuring skills, which ties in beautifully for our damage boosts. Then you want to grab the rare node kindling and the rare node color. For your third board, you want to grab the shock board, and on that one, you want to aim for the rare nodes. Overwhelming and the other one is incapacitate. You eventually want to get all the way down to the board to paralyzing. The glyph that I'm running on this board is destruction full of crit damage, but I haven't got this perfected yet. So this can be improved on. Okay, now let's go through the actual skills that are being used. We're using firebolt for our enchantment pretty basic. We do that to proc the burning on every target and we're using ice shards to proc whenever we freeze. As far as what's on our tree, we are using flame shield and we have that for the immobilize and for the invulnerability. We are using lightning spear for the distant stun and the damage boost and we're using unstable currents for the ultimate. Okay, now let's quickly go over a few strengths and weaknesses in this build. In this clip, we go into an elite mob way above our level and decimate it in under a second. It's very hard to work out exactly how much damage is being done in these, but my guess would be over a million in under a second. And we move on to how they work in bosses. This has so much CC stun that the vulnerable bar will creep up extremely fast. Once it has hit, the bosses are affected by every type of control. So our damage goes insane. As you could see there, we just destroyed that boss. Another key strength to this build is the fact that you don't have to be at looking at the boss. You can be focused completely on avoiding and you will still be taking a considerable amount of health off the boss, as well as the vulnerable bar, which is what we're actually aiming for in this build. We want to get the boss vulnerable, run in there, and annihilate them. Its crowd control works on instant stuns and freezes. So if we are stuck in an area where enemies just appear out of nowhere, which happens so much in this game, you can deal with it instantly. You attack fast enough to proc barriers and you do enough damage to kill everything. You still have to be careful and you still have to time when you actually want to use your flame shield. But once you get used to it, this build is quite insane. Okay, now let's move on to weaknesses. The weaknesses of this build are its low resistance, so it can take quite a lot of damage very fast 
and it requires a certain skill rotation to achieve the maximum DPS. If you get messed up, like in this clip on screen right now, how I was pulled out of my combo and I had to survive and basically find a way out of that situation and wait for my cooldowns. The constant barrier procs, as well as the stuns, allows you to do it. All you have to really remember is always attack. If you're attacking, you're stunning, and you're putting up barriers. Now let's go back to that first clip, and we will go through exactly what caused those extreme damage bursts. As you can see on screen, I run in a stun, and then I proc my flame shield. I move through him to get the immobilize. Then I proc my ice, and then I use my cold shards. Basically what happens is, you get the 75 times crit damage when you proc immobilize. And then on top of that, you have got your frost damage, you have got your vulnerable damage, you have got your stun damage, and then you've just got your crit damage. So on top of your normal base attack, you have nearly every single crowd control method adding to your DPS. What this causes is extreme numbers as you can see on screen. Now let's move on to the second clip. In the second clip, we use our unstable currents to run through this guy. Now, if you have someone that's just a little bit too beefy and is taking just a little bit too long to kill, which some of the elites at 15, 20 plus levels above you definitely will, that is when your unstable currents come in. It will melt them instantly. You do the same technique, so you run through with the flame shield, you immobilize, you freeze, and then you just go ham. You have 2.3 seconds or between 2 and 3 seconds to utilize the full damage of the immobilize, but that is plenty. Like I said, you could proc over a million damage in under a second. And I think that pretty much covers everything about this build. This is a hybrid of the cold build and a hybrid of the shock build. Together, it creates an instant DPS destroyer. All right, thank you, everybody. I um, hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like and subscribe. This is the new channel, and I would really love all the motivation to continue making these types of videos. Have a wonderful day.